So um, you've never been adjusted before, correct? This is your first adjustment? This is my first formal adjustment. I've had my back cracked before, but not by a chiropractor. And because it's her first time, we're going to laser to calm the inflammation down and to reduce the muscle spasms in the abdominal wall because I have to get through that. Welcome everybody, Synergy Wellness Chiropractic and Physical Therapy here. We have a young lady that is, um, well, has been diagnosed recently yeah. with a hiatal hernia. That's right. She was diagnosed via endoscopy. Uh, she has a small hiatal hernia, but one of the reasons I wanted to do a video on her was because um, she has uh, not the typical symptoms you would find with a hiatal hernia. Typically, you would find uh, symptoms like acid reflux, and sometimes difficulty breathing, regurgitation of food. She's not having that. So why don't you tell everybody what, what kind of symptoms you're having? Yeah, sure. Um, so I experience palpitations mostly, or like a fluttering in the chest, which I'm not sure if it's coming from my diaphragm or if it's my hiatal hernia, even though it's small, if it's pushing up or pressing against and irritating my vagus nerve. Um, but I first experienced these symptoms in January of 2021. And then it was confirmed, like you said, via endoscopy later that same year. I'd gone to um, the ER several times um, and I was discharged with perfectly fine blood tests and was told I was likely experiencing panic attacks. Um, mm -hmm. But I, those, that specific symptom kept persisting. So I, I wasn't totally convinced that you know, I, that something wasn't wrong with my heart. And at that time, I wasn't totally aware of like what hi a hiatal hernia was or like the symptoms that could accompany it. So um, I ended up seeing cardiologists. They said, well, you mm -hmm. know, you do experience some benign PVCs, but there are people who experience hundreds of PVCs and, you know, it's totally fine and benign. I, I had EKGs done, an right. echocardiogram. And how were those? Normal. They said my strong is my heart is strong and healthy. Okay. But that sometimes there are some PVCs and that could be stress related. Okay. Um, How many times yeah. were you having this feeling, this fluttering in, during the day, or was it constant? Yeah. So recently it's been more constant, and I do notice that when I'm more stressed or eating certain foods, it happens more often. Okay. Um, yeah, so lately so, it's been more often. So you link it to the food and after eating it gets yeah, worse? Yeah, maybe okay. posture. My okay. posture used to be really good. Like I'm okay. actually, I'm being mindful of it right so now. So let's start with that now. Let's yeah. take a look at your posture. Sure. Let's go ahead and have you stand up. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to have you face that okay. right, so that I can see. Okay. And bend forward, touch your toes, watch your head. Okay. There you go. And I'm cracking already. Okay, and come back there? up. Okay. okay. Your back is pretty flat through here. Mm -hmm. so like in 2019, I was under a lot of stress at work. Drop your arms for me. Mm -hmm. okay. And so I, my posture wasn't as good as it is right now. Okay. Yeah. Folks, take a look at this. Well, first off, um, we're going to look at her shoulders. Her right shoulder is higher, right here. And when we look at her pelvis here, her left pelvis over here is higher. So there may be some scoliosis involved, and that can increase the likelihood, especially if it's a lumbothoracic mm -hmm. scoliosis, uh, can increase the likelihood of a hiatal hernia. Uh, because it's all about the positioning of the diaphragm and so what we're going to do is take a look at you over here lay on your stomach Okay, good and relax your head down. but What it looks like to me is you've you've got some really weak muscles in your back And we're going to test those that. in a minute. Uh, you're going to put your hand here raise your elbow up and I'm going to push down. I want you to resist me. One, okay. two, three, resist. Relax. That was weak. And this one. 
Raise that elbow up, one, two, three, resist. And that was weak, okay. Tender right oh, here? Yep. Yeah. And that's where your diaphragm gets its nerve supply, right here in the uh, upper lumbar, lower thoracic region, okay? Mm -hmm. So nerve supply right to the diaphragm, to the muscles of the diaphragm as well, mm -hmm. and relax your head down. So you had mentioned before, you don't like to have your neck cracked. No. We're not gonna be doing any adjusting <laughs> right now. We're just doing an examination, a little bit of palpation here, and you're tender throughout yeah. here, I can tell. Yeah. Okay. And how about down here? Holy crap, yeah. Yeah, and here? Um, more on the left, but yep. Okay. So you get some lower back pain as well? I do. Okay. And you know what, thinking back, I fell. I remember falling on like a wooden slab of some sort when I was like 12. Okay. And I never received any medical <laughs> treatment for that. You had back pain ever since? Yep, like in my tailbone region. Okay, uh, turn over on your back, please. Uh, did you eat before you came? Um, I at uh, nine a.m. I'm like okay. I knew I would be lying down, so I didn't want to like have too much food. Okay, so um, you know, as you guys heard, she has some different symptoms, not your typical symptoms you would find uh, with a hiatal hernia. So just that heart palpitation feeling, that I pumping think. feeling in the chest, like you're having a heart attack or a panic attack. Or, yeah, what about or like breathing? A, like a skipped beat. I breathe fine. Like a skipped beat, you said? Yeah, or like an extra beat. Okay. But I, again, been cleared by several cardiologists, including an electrophysiologist. Mm -hmm. Without, though, the acid reflux. So she, mm -hmm. after she got an endoscopy, they showed a small sliding hiatal hernia. That's the most common. Mm -hmm. Uh, type 1 hiatal hernia, and we're going to do the hiatal hernia maneuver on her uh, here in just a minute. So hang tight and take a look. So um, you've never been adjusted before, correct? This is your first adjustment? This is my first formal adjustment. I've had my back cracked before, but not by a chiropractor. Okay, who <laughs> cracked your back? <laughs> um, it was a, um, oh my gosh, a personal trainer. Personal trainer. Yeah. Okay. It, it, yeah. I, no, yeah, I mean, you really ought to, you really got to be careful about that. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, if you're just cracking your back as you're twisting or something like that, that's okay. But if, you know, a personal trainer is going in there and forcefully doing that, it's really, really dangerous. There's yeah. a reason why they're, you know, personal trainers in this state aren't even allowed to give uh, uh, nutritional advice. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Because they don't have degrees in it. Yeah. And um, it takes years to learn how to do that. And he could mess things up worse. Yeah. And so, that was just one time. I completely agree with you. It was I, just one time. And I had to I feel didn't afterwards. It, I didn't see it. I didn't, certainly didn't see that coming. I thought we were having a stretching session. Oh, okay. And then so maybe he didn't do it on purpose. He was just stretching. No, but then he started. No, but he did, he did go in. And okay. Start so like, for example, back. if you have a spondylolisthesis and he goes in and starts pushing in the wrong spot, he could really cause some problems. So yeah. it's, um, it's more like a pop and pray. Um, <laughs> and also chiropractors are looking, you know, they're much more specific. So if Absolutely. you have, for example, if you have a pinched nerve in your uh, neck uh -huh. and you have numbness or tingling in your, you know, in these two mm -hmm. fingers, they know to go to C6 vertebra and check that C6, C7 junction, right? No, that's great. Uh, no, that's he wouldn't I'm know here. that. He wouldn't know that that's the problem. And, and you definitely don't want him touching your neck. Uh, oh, and stay away from the lower back. Sometimes the thoracic spine can crack pretty easily, mm -hmm. especially if you put a little bit of pressure on it. Mm -hmm. With you, um, that would make your problem worse. So if he yeah. had put you face down mm -hmm. and started pushing down on your back, that would actually make it worse. You have a bunch yeah. of anteriors in mm -hmm. your spine. You have a lot of weakness in those back muscles. Yeah. So one of the biggest things uh, we're gonna have to work on with you is strengthening your back muscles. Yeah. Because you're um, large breasted, yeah. okay, um, that causes yeah. this posture to kind of come yeah. down, right? So and then also to, stress, and then it's like, yep, <laughs> working in front on a, on a yep. cell phone, on a laptop, yep. everything we're doing is in front of us. So yeah. we're gonna work on after we get motion through your thoracic spine and pull the stomach down, the hiatal mm -hmm. hernia down, we're then gonna work on strengthening your, your back muscles. I love and that, plan. Uh, that we can do easily. We have classes online, so you can do it from home, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's good. get you started on your stomach. All right, perfect. Lay face down. Okay. Relax your shoulders. 
I'm gonna give you heat on your lower back also because you were complaining of some lower back pain ever since you yeah. fell when you were a child, right? Yeah, 20 years ago. Okay, you haven't had any pain shooting down your legs or anything like that, have yeah. you? No. Okay, good. Okay, I'm gonna have you relax here for about 10 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna take the heat off of her now. And, um, you know, yesterday we had a young man with hiatal hernia and had different symptoms than her in the sense that he had a lot of acid reflux and uh, food regurgitating, coming back up. A lot of heartburn. So with him though, he noticed uh, things got a lot worse when he would do dishes, when he was bending over doing dishes and, um, or just standing all day. And he's in the military. So they, in some cases, require him to stand all day. Do you notice that your symptoms get worse after you've been standing all day or doing something yeah, repetitive? Yeah, or, or if I been bend over to get something on the floor after I've eaten, so I completely stop doing that. If you bend day. down on the floor? to get yeah, something like, off the yeah, floor. Yeah, right. So that's that motion of bringing the uh, diaphragm down and bending like that. Yeah. So, uh, but it also tells me um, both of the, both you and him mm -hmm. have um, weakness in your back muscles mm -hmm. and that's something we have to strengthen. So I just emailed her some uh, stretches. Um, we're coming out with a video soon, um, 10 exercises and stretches, mainly exercises to strengthen your diaphragm, very important. Yeah. So stay tuned, I'm gonna hopefully get that video done this weekend. Um, tender right there? Yep. Okay. So since this is your first adjustment, we're gonna do some gentle Thompson technique. That was the technique there where the piece drop pops up. Uh -huh. And then drops down. Are you okay with that? Yeah. How's that feel now? A little less pressure on your lower back? Yeah. So like I said, you can, um, you know, we have classes now, virtual classes that work on your core and your posture. Mm -hmm. And that would be great for you to do. Uh, we have a personal trainer, Marcos, that does that virtual classes online. You guys can go to our website, synergywellnessny.com. And under the book now button, you can see our classes. Um, there are small classes geared towards, again, posture and your core. Now, there are two different levels. Level one is for seniors, level two is intermediate. Right now we just have level one and two classes. You would be perfect for the level two, okay? Okay. And we'll have you on the exercises probably in about a week. Um, I've got you on some exercises for your diaphragm. I sent you those, okay? Fantastic. Those you can start right away this weekend. Okay, so we're gonna loosen up some of the muscles in here. Doesn't that feel amazing? Wow. <laughs> yeah. Holy.
So another condition that causes those heart palpitations she's having is costochondritis. And a lot of those people feel like they're having a panic attack. Very common, uh, more common to see that with costochondritis than a hiatal hernia. That's why I wanted to do this video to show you that there are a multitude of uh, symptoms associated with hiatal hernia that you, most people would not connect the dots, okay? All right, so go ahead, bend your knees for me. Take a deep breath in and blow all the way out. Good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And drop your legs down. Good. Okay, now turn over on your back. Okay, and slide down just a little bit for me. Yeah. Okay. Cross your arms here in front of you. Give yourself a big hug here. Tuck your chin down. Deep breath in. Come on up. Okay, we're going to do a few adjustments in here. Yep. Oh, crap. <laughs> and another deep breath in. Tuck your chin down. Come on up a little bit. Yep. And blow all the way out. Okay. And one more. Deep breath in. Tuck your chin. And blow all the way out. Keep your chin tucked. Holy crap. I'm super crunchy. <laughs> super crunchy. There you go. <laughs> I just never thought that before. That was really good. Yeah. So what we did was there were some vertebrae in your thoracic spine that were locked up mm -hmm. and fixated. So we just freed up some of that motion there, okay? Um, eventually, we're going to get you to strengthen the area, strengthen your diaphragm, mm -hmm. but also your back muscles. Some of the exercises I sent you already do strengthen your back muscles as well as your diaphragm. So there's a mixture of the okay. book that works on your posture yeah. but also the strengthening of the diaphragm because the muscle in the diaphragm is weak mm -hmm. so the hole that's in there the hiatus mm -hmm. is larger than what it should be right. we want to tighten that that hole up yeah bit, that, that makes hiatus. Sense. without the stomach being in there of course so now obviously you feel that in your neck there I right do you get headaches at all? Um, not frequently, no. Thankfully. Now, she does not like her neck being adjusted. She's I really see. nervous about yeah, that. Yeah, I might change so her not, next time. Yeah, we're not going to adjust her neck. But I am pointing out, feel that right yeah, there? Yeah, I do. Uh, feel it on this side? More Perfectly on the left. normal, yeah. So there's a subluxation here, a misaligned mm -hmm. vertebra, okay? Mm -hmm and right there as well yeah. so when she's ready we'll adjust her but we can do a lot of adjusting without it, any cracking okay so we're going to do that right now we're going to show you how we adjust the neck without cracking her neck so just relax here mm -hmm. there's no cracking going on okay yep just relax your head in my hands what i'm doing right now is stair stepping and this helps to get the joints the facet joints gliding a little bit better and you will not hear any cracking or crunching. No super crunch here. Okay. <laughs> A lot of times just doing this can be really helpful. Mm -hmm. We have one patient we don't adjust her neck because of her past history. And relax your neck, relax your shoulders. This is what we do for her, and this is really helpful for her. And we're going to know right away afterwards. I'm going to check those spots that were sensitive and uh, just check the range of motion. How's that now? I feel better. Yep, look mm -hmm. at that. And That's there, too. Good. And the range of motion is much better. Look at that. Yeah. It's not perfect, but it's much better just from doing that. Did we crack your neck? No, not at all. No cracking. See that? Okay, wow. now hiatal hernia maneuver. So you're gonna pull your shirt up a little bit okay. to your rib cage there. Yep. You're yeah. gonna bend your knees for me, please. See that? So if any of you ever go to a chiropractor and you're afraid to have your neck cracked, just tell the chiropractor. There's so many things that they can do without cracking your neck. That's just one technique. There's probably another. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, uh, four or five, maybe ten, maybe maybe more techniques. 
some which I don't even know, but uh, at least 10 or more techniques yeah. without any cracking of any of the joints, okay? Yeah. But the cracking noise is just gas being released from the joint, from the cavitation of the joint. Yeah. Similar to uh, gas bouncing off a can of soda, off the fluid in the soda, mm -hmm. that gas is bouncing off synovial fluid and that's why it's making right. that cracking noise mm -hmm. right there. And there's no uh, proof that it makes your knuckles bigger. Those are yeah. all myths. <laughs> they are not true. You hear that folks? Okay, so now we're gonna start with um, hiatal hernia treatment. And because it's her first time, we're going to laser um, right above the hiatal hernia, right on top of it, to calm the inflammation down and to reduce the muscle spasms in the abdominal wall, because I have to get through that. This really helps. And it also makes it more comfortable for the patient. So we go right to where the ribs meet in, in the middle here, the xiphoid. And go right underneath it where the abdominal aponeurosis attaches onto the rib and the burp and the breastbone. Mm. Got some old school music going it. on here, huh? Oof. These are my jams. Yeah, you like the old school yeah, stuff? Yeah, for sure. What movie was this one from? Uh, oh. Was it? No, I was going to say pretty much. Ghost? It was definitely not. Oh, I Love Ghost with Patrick Swayze. Yeah, was it? And Demi Moore. No, I don't think it was in Ghost. Um, anyway. Hmm. Maybe in Dirty Dancing. Dirty with Dancing. With Patrick Swayze. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was in Dirty Dancing. You're right, yeah. You know you got the actor right. Yeah, exactly. Right actor, wrong movie. <laughs> okay, so we leave this. This is a 25 watt cold laser, so we're gonna leave this here for about two minutes. Uh, we have another laser around here somewhere. That one, it's about a 60 second treatment time. Really just depends on the strength of the laser. We have rental lasers that uh, you can rent and those are 15 watts so those might be three minute treatments uh, but those are really effective um, we we rent those you won't need to rent one mm -hmm. um, we're gonna address this here in the office uh, the lasers really not what's going to help you get through this it's just going to make it a little bit more comfortable especially with the spasms you get yeah side oh, I can feel it depends everybody's different but sometimes you feel the wall the muscular abdominal wall and sometimes oh, yeah. you can feel through it like there and I'm able to feel through your abdominal wall there good just relax here and I can feel that pulsation right there that mm -hmm. you're having your back Did you feel that one the most? Yeah. <laughs> that okay. one. Okay. Now I'm gonna okay. have you roll to your side. I don't want you to bend in a sit-up yeah. position yeah, to right. come up. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. Mm -hmm. and push off your elbow and your hand and then swing your legs down at the same time. There you oh, go. Okay. That's the right way to get up. Okay. Okay. All right, I look forward to getting you better and fixing this hiatal hernia, and then we'll, you know, you can go back for another endoscopy, whether it's six months from now or sooner, right. and uh, get that negative diagnosis. Awesome. Okay? And then get rid of these palpitations you're having, and yeah. also the back pain as well. So, All thank right. you so much. All right, thanks for doing a video for us. If you guys have any comments or questions, uh, please comment below, or if you want to see any kind of particular video, I hope you like our channel and subscribe thanks again folks thanks for tubing in